Okay, welcome back for the next instalment and we're revisiting my high-low gear issue. I've done a video before, went through the solenoids, went through drilling out um, the little orifice restrictors that restrict the airflow when the gear change for the high-low. And I assumed, and I was sure, the problem was solved. But even though the machine hasn't been run, I've turned it on and off enough times and done the power-up restart um, to unfortunately realise that the issue isn't solved. Now, in between doing that, I actually replaced the high-low solenoid at the back because I thought that's going to be the issue and we've got an air leak. So you can see up there, it's all just hanging and the old solenoid is here. So it turns out there was actually nothing wrong with this solenoid. But I mentioned previously that there's an air leak. And I could hear a large amount of air, depending on what gear, whether it was in high gear, you had a small air leak. I think if it was in low gear, you could hear a bigger air leak. Um, so currently, we're in high gear. Now if I go MDI, I think it's M41. Right, we're now in low gear and there's a small air leak. Now, I've kind of had a little mess around and it seems to have got slightly better. And if you run it, if you manage to change gear in the morning on the power up restart and it works, it will work all day. Um, the other day I'd done about 500 tool change, not tool changes, gear changes in a cycle like I showed in a video previously. I'd read in Google about bird over gears, when I've done a Google search, shall I say, about gears that are bird over, and sometimes running the machine for a period of time in reverse and doing cycles will help to kind of push the burr back the other way. So I run it for a day or two in reverse, counterclockwise, um, doing various gear changes, and that seemed to work okay. But coming the next day, power up restart, won't change gear. Um, disconnect the airlines, blow air into it, boom, changes gear, no problem. So I think our issue is actually gonna be, let me just jog this, because I'm not gonna be able to show you truly, but if I jog this right down, I'll take this off, and behind there, you can just see one of the, he's probably not gonna focus on it, but that black cylinder that is behind the gear for the spindle belt is the high-low air shift cylinder that the air gets forced into. And when you look at some of this stuff on Google searches and things like that, I found a few pictures, but no exploded diagrams, that he's got a shaft with a quad ring seal um, and a few O-ring seals and air can bypass them. And what I think is happening is that, let's say for example, you've got it in low gear, that air is bypassing the seal onto the high gear sideline, which is why you can hear a constant air leak because that air leak is actually coming out of the high gear line and there should be no air coming, and that's coming back from the cylinder back into the manifold. And obviously that shouldn't be happening. The air should be in there and it should stay in there. And then when you go to change into high gear, I think it bypasses even worse, um, hence why it's not shifting properly. So one way or another, it's got to come out. And I did try and avoid it, and I was kind of happy that it didn't have to be done, but there's no point me lying to myself and putting the covers back on when I know this is an issue, because I just don't want to have to kind of be in the middle of jobs and it start to cause problems. So this is just a short update. I've bought all the bearings for the gearbox. I may not go into the actual gearbox itself. Um, I'll take this off, I'll disconnect the cables and everything. We'll lift the spindle motor and the gearbox. You can raise that as one unit. Luckily enough, I've got um, my landlord next door with a small forklift truck, which will get in nicely behind the machine to be able to sort of, well, put an extension on one of the forks to be able to lift this and then you can drop just that cylinder on its own off the front. That may be enough for me to do it. But then the other part of me is, right, I bought the bearings for the gearbox, there's five bearings, 
there's various seals in the States. They sell kits for the seals, but at the end of the day, an O-ring's an O-ring, and I can't see myself having no problem measuring them to find out what ones it needs and what the sizes are, etc. So I'm thinking if I'm gonna do it, I probably may as well attempt to strip it down fully. Um, a couple of the pulleys, or one of the pulleys at least, the main one, may require some heat to remove it once the, um, I think it's the one that goes through this mounting plate to the spindle belt at the back, I think. Can't remember what he said, but one of them might require heat and a fair few tonnes to press it off. Not sure if I'll be able to do that, and that's kind of why I don't want to get into it too much. But on the other hand, if I change all the bearings and everything, you're doing it all in one hit while it's apart rather than twice. So yes, there's gonna be a further video about the high-low gearbox issues, and I'm gonna do my best to record everything. Um, removing the whole lot. On Hassie's diagrams, you'll see there's a little cap in the top side of that there. Let me just see if I can climb up here, give you a better look. So you see these caps, this, I probably can't get them off the finger, there's a hole in this bit of sheet metal. Now this is quite thick, um, trying to get a bit where you can see sort of roughly how thick it is. It's about four millimetres thick, I think. So this is quite sturdy. And what the Haas service manual shows is like a fixture jig that they bolt to the table um, down there. It comes up on a pole and you kind of wind it to lift the transmission off. So you have something that goes in there and goes in there. Now you can't run it all the way through because there's a fan and the fan is riveted to this top plate, which is a bit of a pain. I may take this back off, drill these rivets out, so I can put a bar through there. You can't put the bar through because the fan comes down like so far. But if I don't do something where I can put a bar all the way through, I'd have to make something that goes in, comes up, and make sure I don't want to put hooks in there because it's going to bend it, I'm guessing. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do yet. But I will do a full video of it. It's gonna be pretty long-winded, but for anyone doing the gearbox um, tear down, it will at least, I won't know how far I'll go into the actual tear down of the gearbox yet, but it will hopefully, you know, as good as my videos are, not as, not as good as some out there, but it will show you a, a, a good guide of how you're gonna take it, remove it, strip down to a point anyway. And there's plenty of info you can search out there on these gearbox problems and how people have solved them. And there is some good info out there, but there's very few proper pictures. There's someone on YouTube who done a gearbox tear down. Unfortunately, the gearbox was already removed from the machine. So you just see it laid out on the bench. And the bit that daunts most people, including myself, is how you get all this off, how difficult it is, and how difficult it is to get the pulleys off, etc. So that's the bit that I wanna see and that's the bit that I'm gonna try and record. I'll get a tripod for the camera, just so I can sort of rather than hold it at arm's length like I am now, we'll try and get something good. So that's enough talking. Keep your eyes out in the future, probably be a few weeks um, before I get around to doing that. But yes, there will be a video coming, part two, high-low gearbox issues. Cheers for watching.